everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel and to the third part of my Orchids in Bloom and Spike for April. So I'm going to maybe start splitting my Orchids in Bloom up a little bit because I find it easier to manage in this format and I got some good feedback from you guys about splitting them. So first of all I'm going to start off in this video talking about my Oncidium types. So this includes my Miltoniopsis and a couple of Oncidium types that I've got in bloom at the moment including uh, Nelly Isla, Hera Alexandra and the Oncidium Twinkle, as well as a few others in my grow room. So first of all, we are going to start off talking about my Miltoniopsis Hera Alexandra. So my Miltoniopsis Hera Alexandra is um, doing really well. One of the first Miltoniopsis types that I got, just like a single bulb Miltoniopsis from a flower shop, and it's just grown really well. You will notice that it's got some chlorotic patches on the leaves where the uh, there's like some bleaching at the tips of the leaves. This is where I sprayed neem oil and the tips of the leaves that are resting up against the lights have bleached basically. Um, I don't think this is going to restore because it hasn't yet. I don't think it's a nutrient deficiency or anything because it, the patterning and the way it happened sort of quite soon after a spray treatment. So this happened to a few of my oncidiums that were kind of resting up against the lights. So just one of those things to be aware of and be more careful of in future. So this one has produced four or five spikes at the moment. Two of them are currently blooming, as you can see. Beautiful white flower with kind of a yellow yolk center and these gorgeous kind of purple aubergine colored eyes. Now, originally when this flowered for me last year, it produced only three flowers, but much bigger. So I think there is a trade-off between quantity and quality, unfortunately, on this occasion. And this could be because I relatively recently repotted all of my Miltoniopsis into inorganic media and they skipped blooming last autumn winter while they were adjusting. So this could be that or it could be that the plant has just kind of overexerted itself with four or five spikes. I think we've got four kind of big spikes and then a fifth just starting at the moment. So I'll show you a picture up on screen of it when it bloomed last year and I do prefer the bigger flowers I think to the multitude of smaller blooms but with lots of smaller blooms I'm getting a much better fragrance. So the fragrance on this is really beautiful, rosy, slightly citrusy lemony. It does remind me a little of the Nelly Isla which brings us quite nicely on to my next orchid in bloom which is the Oncidopsis Nelly Isla. Now the Nelly Isla, one of my favourite orchids, stunning red Oncidium cross, so it's a, a cross between Oncidium and Miltoniopsis. Really, really beautiful. The best thing about this, in my opinion, one obviously the colour is so striking and beautiful. Ease of growth compared to Miltoniopsis. Originally, I thought that these were a little bit slower, but once they've established, they are growing quicker than my Milts. So I do think that they are a very vigorous hybrid once they've got established. The other thing that you'll obviously um, find a major draw to them is the fragrance. Now they have a beautiful sharp citrusy fragrance that's like kind of sharp candied lemon peel almost. It's very lemon peel-ish to me rather than like citrusy mild. It's very strong and sharp and I love it. It fills the whole grow room with just one spike and this spike has actually branched this year so it produced a little br side branch with two or three flowers on. The actual plant itself is not looking great it's adjusting, it's putting out another new growth. Um, it's doing well considering, but whenever you repot and disturb these, I always just find that they, they just take a little while to get back into the swing of things. Next up is my Oncidium Twinkle, and this one I repotted with my other Twinkle into these big chocolate tub containers, and I am quite liking them. They have rooted in these very well. Obviously I can't see the roots but I can tug on them and they feel firmly rooted so they obviously put new roots down to the media and no shriveling with the bulbs. Bulbs are all nice and plump. Flowering on this one not on the other one so I think that this is just kind of a fluke flower spike from one of the portions of plant. You'll notice a little bit of uh, fungal spotting on the leaves. I can't seem to kick that with my twinkles. I can with most things and I do use a preventative fungicide treatment but it doesn't seem to do much for my twinkles so I end up cutting the leaf tips off and this has just always been the case for me. I can never fully get this and you'll find that twinkles are so prone to spotting in some environments and some conditions and I wonder if it's to do with growing them a little bit warmer than they would like. Very compact plants but they do grow very rapidly into these bushes that can be quite hard to accommodate beautiful, wonderful, soft vanilla cookie type fragrance, really lovely. 
Next up, we're gonna talk about some of my miniature orchids. And some of these range from very mini, true miniatures to just kind of nice compact mini orchid. Now miniatures aren't to everyone's tastes but they are really beautiful little am amendments to your collection that you can just kind of pop in amongst your collection, don't take up a lot of space and just provide really cute little flowers. Um, a couple of these are fragrant, the majority of miniatures aren't in my experience but you definitely can find some fragrant miniatures from each species. So I have changed some of the setups for a couple of these recently because they were just kind of in slightly too big pots. So for example, this Hariella retrocala was in a larger semi-hydro pot and it kept diving its flower spikes down into the pot and I kept losing them. Um, because it produces very short spikes, it does need to be in a smaller pot. So I have put it into this kind of synthic um, mix with a little bit of lecker and some lava rock in there and this is a new potting which is why it looks a bit ridiculous with all the string tied around it but I've got this on a little coffee pod stand so it's kind of tilted a little bit and seems to be working a little bit better in terms of the flower spike display. So first of all we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about the Hariella retrocala. So this is an absolutely gorgeous little miniature. It's actually two plants on this one or it the one plant has a keiki and never quite managed to figure it out. They look conjoined, but there could be two plants in the pot and I never fully investigated, to be honest, because they're very intertwined in the root department. So this little orchid has a slight citrusy fragrance. It's not gonna fill the room because the flowers are so small, but if you go and smell it, you will notice this slight kind of lemony fragrance coming from it, which I didn't notice so much when it was in a larger pot. I guess the um, smell doesn't travel very far at all and kind of needs to be very very close to the flower for you to detect it. It's a little top view of the two plants. I think it, it potentially is two plants but I'm not sure. These little pots do dry out in a few days but I've just got a little spray bottle by the mount area that I can zap them with and I will show you that once I've got them a little bit more established because it's quite a nice little mount idea I think for any five centimeter pots you have lying around. So that's the Hariella Retrocala, gorgeous little miniature, won't take up any shelf space at all, produces these cute little flowers and grows very easily and well in warmer climates. Next up we've got the Lepanthes Telepagoniflora, true miniature orchid. This kind of, when I first got it, I didn't realise the scale of the photos, so I kind of wanted to show you this because it's smaller than a fingertip, the whole orchid. And the flower is pretty much as big as the orchid itself. Uh, it's a very, very cute little mini, but again, if placed in too large of a pot, it kind of gets swamped and you don't really see it. So I have transferred it recently. It likes quite a lot of moisture. So this is in mainly synthetic and it seems to be doing very, very well. I tried it mounted in a little terrarium that I had for a while, but it wasn't really working very well. It, was drying out too quickly even in a terrarium so you'll notice I've hot glued the bottom of these pots so they don't drain they do have drainage holes sort of in the side for a few of them but again they hold on to moisture for a few days and then I just zap them with the sprayer so I filmed this and then I'm going to come back in a couple of days because these buds or at least this bud here is just about to open and I wanted to show you the flower so I'm going to kind of come back and show you the flower once it's fully open and we'll talk more about the flower shape and structure but you can see it's got these gorgeous hot orange buds and then a couple of days later the first flower has popped open and these flowers do only last a few days before they fade but it produces a sequential blooming stem and it keeps each of these stems pretty much months and months and months and it just continues blooming over and over again. You can see on the stem on the right there's one bud that's kind of shriveled and another one is coming. Close up of the flower and they remind me of some sort of an alien or an alien flower. It's the kind of shape. I don't know why but like an octopus and I really love them. They're so cute. Again they will be easily overlooked in a collection but to me just having the things like this dotted around, the Lepanthus telepagoniflora is a warm growing Lepanthus, so it grows really well in my warmer orchid room. Just dotted around on the shelf and occasionally I just look over and see that it's got loads of buds out and it does just make me happy. And that's what growing orchids is all about. So 
this might not be for you, this sort of tiny little miniature, because they're not showstoppers. They're not going to wow you as soon as you walk into the room. But they definitely invite you to look closer at them. And I just find this adorable. And you may think, well, clover flowers are adorable too. Yeah, very true. But I find orchids fascinating and the diversity of the different species. And I just, I think this is so cute and adorable. So I, it's no trouble to keep. And eventually when they grow into specimens, you can have little bushes of these flowers because they're so prolific and floriferous and they bloom so often and so well no fragrance at all but you know you wouldn't with miniature orchids even when there is a fragrance it's never going to be like a fill the room type fragrance because the flowers are so small but I just think they're cute and adorable and if you are interested in getting into a few minis I would definitely recommend Lepanthus um, Stellis seem to be quite easy as well which I've got another one of those in bloom and Chlorothallis in general, um, they seem a little bit easier than like the Mastabalias and Restrepias of the minis because they're often warmer growing. So that's the Lepanthus telepagoniflora. Gorgeous little mini and smaller than a fingertip. Won't take up any shelf space at all. If you've got a little mini orchid section, pop it in there. Why not? It'll definitely cheer you up and make you happy. Some of the dangers with small orchids is just that they can get swamped by media very easily, yet they do enjoy a lot of moisture. So once you've kind of found that balance, minis are definitely very rewarding for your collection. Next up, we're going to talk about the Pleurothallis pabstii. And I got this in a haul from an orchid nursery that I will link up in the corner and down below. And it put out a spike and has bloomed for me. Very, very cute, no fragrance. Um, and it kind of reminds me of grass, producing grass seeds a little bit. So I don't know what I expected, but I don't think it was quite this. It's very cute. And I think the actual orchid itself is probably more interesting in terms of foliage, foliage than the flowers, but the flowers are very interesting on a kind of micro level if you want to get your magnifying glass out. Uh, they are very cute and nice little sprays of flowers. And I can imagine on a larger plant, it would look very cute and very rewarding. And again, they don't take up very much space and they're very easy to grow. So why not have them in your collection if you like minis and you're into that sort of thing? I personally do really like them. This one lives in my cooler corner with the Mastervalias, which are actually starting buds at the moment for some of them. Um, as you can see for scale, my finger is quite significantly larger than this spike, but I just, I think they're cute. I think that's the thing with minis. They're, they're cute. They're not going to blow you away, but they are really nice, adorable little plants and definitely show you the diversity of orchids. Next up, we've got the Gastrochylus japonicus, and this one is something that I find a little bit more exciting than the previous because we have a fragrance, it's quite a bit bigger, it's produced this wonderful display of flowers. I think last time I only had five or six flowers and I've got about 15 flowers on this spike. I think I am going to repot this um, fairly soon because it again is a little bit swamped by the pot and I had to hook the flower spike round to stop it diving into the media because they do produce these shorter flower spikes I think they do need the smaller pots and I find that difficult to achieve in like a semi-hydro type setup with the very small pots so I think that the kind of small pots but with a very moisture retentive media to balance out how quickly they're going to dry probably works a little bit better but I have grown this one in semi-hydro with Synthic mixed in. It enjoys a lot of moisture and it enjoys that growing media. So you can definitely grow them in semi-hydro. But as long as you don't have too many issues with the dry top layer. But for me, I think I will be transplanting this into a smaller pot once this is finished blooming. And putting it on my little mini display stand. Just because I think, well, I mean, once it gets taller... The, some of the issues with the flower spikes going down into media will probably be mitigated because they're quite short spikes. But I think it just looks a little bit swamped in this pot. These have very thick succulent leaves and when I first repotted this I dropped it and one just snapped which I've kind of um, propped back and it's calloused over and kind of sealed together a little bit but that's why we've got a yellow leaf at the end of this and a slight tear in this leaf and the leaf above. They're very fragile kind of rigid leaves which you wouldn't think looking at them but they are quite thick and succulent and fleshy it's quite funny but they have a slight citrusy fragrance and just cheerful little flowers 
Next up, we've got the Stellis Argentata. I bought this as the Emarginata, which produces tubular yellow flowers, and it bloomed out as the Argentata. Quite happy with that. Very, very cute, very easy growing and easy going. I keep this down in my cool growing corner and it's got quite huge quite quickly. It does just grow very fast. I got it as quite a small plant. It only had maybe three or four leaves and it grew very fast for me. So it produces these long sprays of little flowers that remind me of monkey faces almost. They're, they're very cute. Um, you, again, you need to look very closely to kind of really appreciate how pretty and intricate they are. And they have slight hairs on them as well, which is very funny and they're kind of fuzzy, which is quite cute. Very small again, but once you have a large plant producing long displays of these flower clusters and lots of them, I think that there's more of a show and they do become a bit more interesting. So next, I've got two Vandas to show you, which are actually the same. <laughs> so this was bought from Klassen as Vanda tub tim velvet crossed with willas pink it's bloomed out and it is not that it in fact i put a post up on my instagram and my community posts thinking well what is this and a couple of people came back to me and said oh it looks a bit like an mv tannins which to me was just kind of funny because i've actually got an mv tannins that i've been struggling to flower for ages which is actually in bud at the same time as this so this looks like an MV Tannins to me. The colours looked a little bit different from pictures, but I think that was just pictures because since then my MV Tannins has bloomed out and they are pretty much identical. So I now have two MV Tannins and I certainly don't want to because it's a big plant. MV Tannins is a large vanda, so it's not compact at all. My other one is absolutely huge and I have to put it on the windowsill behind my shelves where I can't get it out very easily beautiful fragrance on this so it's very soft and subtle but it's like vanilla cookies very sweet and kind of soft vanilla fragrance which I really like very pretty flowers and it's bloomed very easily for me in semi-hydro under lights so I definitely think it's a good candidate for under light growing um, I will show you my other one now so this is Vanda MV Tannins number two which was actually the first one I got and I'm sorry that I can't show you this in more detail it's right tucked at the back of some shelves because I couldn't fit it anywhere else and it wasn't blooming for me so I moved it and it's bloomed and it's identical maybe I'll sell one or do a giveaway or something next we're going to look at two of my catacetum types that are in bloom so first up is the catacetum denticulatum and I got this as a free gift with a couple of cloesias that I purchased last year from a seller in Slovenia called Maya Orchids they um, just kept giving me denticulatum back bulb, I think seedlings actually, rather than back bulbs, given the size of them. And one of them's bloomed out. Now the denticulatum comes from very low elevations in the Amazon rainforest. Um, I think it grows quite near to the Amazon River in very high humidity. So I see a lot of people struggling with these on forums and boards. Um, when I got mine, I decided, since I was going for a kind of more unconventional approach with watering my catacetin types that I would just continue to the water this one as normal since it would be getting very high humidity which means that even in its dormant period it'll be getting a lot of morning dew and it's bloomed out for me it was a little seedling bulb when I got it and it's produced a small growth and that's produced two flowers you can really see why it's called the denticulatum the lip is fringed with these tooth like structures which are really interesting this is a view of the whole plant so compared to the actual size of the plant these two flowers are actually quite large and this one has just grown really well for me it was in a tiny pot i thought because it was a seedling to, that i should give it a small pot it, with a ceramis mix um, no, so seedlings of catacetin types grow root systems very quickly and become extremely thirsty. So I up-potted it, so I literally just took the whole pot with all of the roots coming out of the bottom and stuck it in a bigger pot. Seems to have worked well, no fragrance that I can detect, but it's been a very easy grower for me and it's bloomed out as a seedling, which is really interesting to me. So that's the catacetum denticulatum. Next up we have my Cloessia varchevitsii and this is a really really beautiful Cloessia species that is kind of in the same group of species as the Rosea and this is involved quite heavily in both the Greystun and Rebecca Northern uh, hybrids that are very popular. So the varchevitsii produces a very cute 
pale white to green fuzzy lipped flower which I just find so cute and I got this as a seedling that said about two to three years from flowering size from Orchid Garden last summer produced a new growth which dwarfed the other growths and a spike and then I dropped a ceramic pot on the spike so we have two flowers left out of about six that it produced as a first bloom seedling I find this really interesting that it grew so fast and produced a flower so quickly so it's really adorable and the reports were that it produces a citronella like fragrance on orchid species website um, I it took a few days to come out but I can confirm that it produces a really wonderful fragrance that reminds me of a lemongrass soap that I have really really strong kind of lemongrassy fragrance that's how I would describe it anyway citronella to maybe lemongrass really beautiful fragrance um, so I'm very excited for when the Greystown or Rebecca Northern I have bloom out so that's the Cloacea Varchevitsii Next we're going to move on to look at some of my garden orchids which are living out in the greenhouse. So this is my Calanthe hybrid. Um, both of my Calanthe hybrids did very well but only one of them has bloomed and it's produced a few different spikes. They are very interesting and I'm not familiar with many of the Calanthes so maybe if any of you are you could pop a comment down below see, sort of with what you think the hybrid may be or the species. Um, but it has a very dark red background to the flower, the back of the flower, and then the actual flower inside is quite yellow, so it's a very interesting contrast. So those are my Calanthes, and I'm just going to show you my Cypripediums. If we fast forward a couple of weeks, this little Cypripedium has bloomed out and is doing extremely well. So it's a yellow hybrid, so the tag picture was very accurate, and I'm just really happy with how it looks it's not fully open yet but I wanted to show you because it is so cute like it's got a really beautiful bubblegum pouch it reminds me of bubblegum anyway um really cute really pretty and very vigorous this has grown so fast I'm literally astounded and I really enjoy that they produce the flowers as the growths mature so you get a very quick flowering from them my other Cypripedium, as you can see on the left, is just starting to produce a bud, but it's not fully formed yet. But this one on the right has produced so many new growths. Really happy with it. Seems super vigorous. So these are just hybrids. I got these in a Lucky Dip back in January, I think. I'll link up in the description my unboxing and then the follow-up video that I did um, a month or so ago on them. But bloomed out really pretty hybrid I can't detect a fragrance some people have reported that cypripediums can be fragrant but this one doesn't seem to be I was a bit disappointed initially that I got both yellow forms um, because there was also a pink form available and it was just kind of a lucky dip but actually the yellow was really beautiful and gorgeous so I, I'm actually very happy that I got two of the yellow ones so that's the cypripediums and then we're going to take a quick look inside my orchid room at some of the orchids that I couldn't pull out. So first of all, there's an Inca orchids hybrid, which is an Oncidium type. Then my Miltonia flavescens, which has produced four spikes that I've been just, they've been torturing me for months. Growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. And I'm like, please just flower already or die off or something. How long do you want to be? Um, Maybe we'll get some blooms soon, I don't know, but I wanted to show you the spikes in case they do blast, um, evidence that my Miltonia flavescens spiked at least. So next we've got my Oncidium pupicare sunset hybrid, and this is a really beautiful Oncidium type with a lovely fragrance that reminds me of kind of floral incense, very pretty. And one thing I would say with the pupicare sunset is never cut the spikes because they often branch and produce secondary spikes off them, which is very unusual for Oncidium types. While we're in the orchid room, I'm going to quickly show you something that I found last night, which is as my purple no ID mini fowl flowers were fading, they seem to have self-pollinated. So I've got some seed pods starting. Next up, I'm going to talk to you about my Phalaenopsis gigabell, which I already talked to you about in my first segment. The flower was just starting to open. Um, it's open, so I just thought I'd show you that quickly, even though the lighting isn't great. My Phalaenopsis zebrina, who is hanging in my orchid wardrobe, has produce another spike. I got her not that long ago, I think it was around Christmas, and she's done very well. It's from Elsner Orchids, one of the last hauls that I got from them before they closed down. Also got my Epidendrum radicans in bloom again, and one I don't show you very often because I 
kind of show you it and it keeps blooming off the same spike or reflowering or producing new spikes and it often has three or four spikes at once and this is the Phalaenopsis happy fang sir which is a gorgeous yellow hybrid with a beautiful contrasting purple lip that has a slight sweet floral fragrance and that's pretty much everything in bloom at the moment I think we've managed to get everything into these videos so I hope that you've enjoyed the kind of more segmented format and a few shorter videos rather than one very large video. Thank you so much for watching today. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates. And I'll see you guys all later. Bye.